every one of you watching this screen. Look out. Anything can happen in the next half hour. What did I tell you about cartoons? They've got a lot of brains, and they've got a lot of cushions. Tell me how comic books make you feel, Dave. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. So what have we got here today? We've got Ron Cobb. Now, Ron Cobb came to Australia as a political cartoonist, mm -hmm. but the world knows him, see it's an Australian book, Wild and Woolly, mm -hmm. um, but, the, um, but the world knows him as a designer for uh, Star Wars and mm -hmm. films like that. Mm -hmm. um, but he was a great political cartoonist and he was in, he was in Australia in the late 60s, I think early 70s, mm -hmm. and he did some really powerful stuff. Yeah, so you've met him and I've, I've met him, I've actually worked with him yeah. on an Australian film. Uh, and I've done a workshop What, what with film him. did you work with him on? Um, Garbo, which was a comedy... Uh, Garbo? Yeah. About a Garbo? Yeah, yeah. There he is, there's Ron. A long time ago. Look at him. It's yeah. like he's a, a bear of a man. Beautiful uh, personality, he's really yeah. lovely, friendly, approachable guy. So, um, well, when I met him, he was earlier... more of a polar bear man, so mm. he was, you know. So, there's this short biography which we, we won't go into. I want to examine the work though, because, um, you know, they're really clever, they're really approachable. He doesn't have a slick style, he has a very um, organic style. It's, it's very deliberate, it's very worked like out. Like his so. fantasy work is very meaty. It's not, you know, it's, it's, it's very grounded. Mm. Well, he, he, it, it, it's grounded. The anatomy is brilliant. It's really yeah. well done. But he has some, it's got a sort of a, I don't know, like a fan um, appeal. It's, it looks like it's done by somebody who really loves this medium. And that's what you look at when you see his work. You can see there's love in almost every line. Well, beautiful it's, door, isn't it? Yeah. So it's these adorable. are done irrespective of what the job's for, whether it's a, you know, a cover or a cartoon for a, a, a magazine or something. Um, there's a lot of inventiveness and exploring ideas. So it's fantastic uh, work. He's a very accomplished uh, painter, uh, production artist, working for films. So he's brilliant at composition and master of the medium of uh, acrylic and watercolor and color pencil. And look at that sort of, you know, you could see there he studied some. Or uh, he's done a bit of uh, French. Neoclassic. French art, art for a start. Renaissance yep. painting. That actually reminds me of a neoclassical. Yeah, this actually reminds me of a neoclassical yeah. painting. Like yeah. the, Raft of Medusa or something, ah, the way it's bingo. sort of, That's what I was it's sort of um, yeah. arranged, and even the stormy sky. So a contemporary Frazetta, if you want to look at Frazetta and sort of compare yep. the a bit um, of Michael Angelo in there too. In, yeah, the interest of composition and classical techniques. Mind you, you I've noticed that you only mentioned Michael Angelo around Kirby. <laughs> yeah. So, ah, oh, look at this, this is really cool. Yeah. Look at this little character here. This, you know, a little that, character. That looks like a um, uh, was it? Well, it wasn't Major Akbar or something. In, Commander he, Akbar. Yeah, yeah, Admiral he was, Akbar. Yeah, he sorry, was in Star, sorry. Star Wars. <laughs> so that's a precursor to Admiral Ak Akbar. Um, illustrators would buy this book, and they would use it as a template for generating ideas. So you know, um, Ron Cobb was obviously extremely. Um, um, it's like it's like your schooling. It's like your you must have and study Ron Cobb's work 
if you want to be um, a fantasy illustrator or if you want to work in the film industry because he, he's sort of synonymous with those, those two um, directions for illustration. Um, he's, you know, his stuff, it, it's, it's very, very interesting work. Like, you know, the thing that struck me about his work is the sheer, vo um, not the volume, but the diversity of it. Um, here's like a... Well, classic cover. Famous Monsters cover. That's um, a more Lon Chaney. Lon than, Chaney um, Senior, yeah. The uh, Hunchback the, of Notre the, Dame. And Charles Lawton version. Yeah. So, yeah, it is awesome stuff. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's another. Well, that's pretty iconic, that monsters. picture, isn't it? Pretty yeah, iconic. This, the character from the Saucer Men. Just you have to check out those teeth. Yeah, oh. it, unusual and, devices. And, and, and there was the cover where you've obviously seen it. Yeah. And there's. <laughs> oh my god, it's Tiny Tim. <laughs> Scary. So, oh, look at him. It's really cool. Tip off through the tulips. Oh, is that what he did? I only remember him from Mad Magazine. Oh well, um, and this is <coughs> this is his work. Um, this is his cartoon. So he's done this beautiful little characters with his well, droll expressions. He did some wonderful stuff about the yeah. Aboriginals in Australia. Mm. This is a classic, like the end of the world, yeah. and this bloke's looking for a place to like plug his TV. His in. TV, yeah. Which yeah. today would be how do I charge my phone? Yeah, that's yeah. right. Same same problem, different tech. So these are beautiful these are little... 40 years um, old. Mm. These are beautiful little cartoons. So very he, chunky know, style. Very, very chunky diverse. And... That's the thing that, that I love about his work. He, he's not scared to work in different mediums and different... You know, he'll come up with cartoons and posters and co um, commercial well, art and the, whatever. That's a pretty... Um, so is it gun... That's a pretty, um, you know... Yeah, so he can, he's a gun for hire, certainly, and, uh, you know, it's really cool to see that in an illustrator, the diversity of, of an interest. So... Are we going to do some close-up yeah, I don't know well. whether you can make that out. There's very detailed. There's a lot of pen work. There's a lot of pen work there. A lot of pen work. So here's are some of his... Um, Colour stuff. Cartoons. Yeah, let's get it down there. Be great. Some of his cartoons. Look at this, he's oh, not this scared to famous, do things. This is his famous symbol of... Um... Yeah, he's not scared to do that. That's really cool. Yeah. Look at the detail in that. It's yeah, cool. that was that was it's used gorgeous. a lot in, in, in the 60s. Mm. We had a lot of posters. I've never seen this. it in colour, but... This is a big poster yeah. that you could buy of his work. See, here's one of my favourites. Yeah. Australia. The, yeah. yeah, the Aboriginal is just basically reduced to roadkill. Mm. Extraordinarily powerful stuff. There's a little take on an Art Nouveau piece. So he's, this thing about Ron Cobb is he would study these um, art um, styles. Yeah, this is his own. This is this is uh, his years. version of um, Art Nouveau. Yeah, mm. it's great when an artist does that. Yeah, as opposed to just great copy. You know, sort of he, he it shows an inventive yeah. uh, attitude, vent in mind, very very sharp, very sharp mind. And um, an interest in things. The perspective on this is beautiful. This is simple but beautiful. Look at that. It's great. See, a lot, a lot even something you think, oh well, you've got to draw supermarket shelves, right? Yeah, a lot of look work how in much that. look how much interest he's he's really played with this. He's sort of you know come into the um, into the job or into the idea of doing this the supermarket with is it just one, it's one gag, Marilyn, yeah, it's one simple gag, but look how much work he's put into it. Check out the cookies. It's love. Check out the close yeah. the cookies, that's beautifully rendered. This is it? some of his commercial work. Yeah. So, he, let's see the macadamians in there too. Yeah. The Vegas chips. chips. Yeah. <laughs> nice, beautiful work. Ah, here we go, some of his um, freelance stuff. This is uh, an inf early influence of uh, Star Wars. This is some of his earlier pieces. I first saw this in Starlog magazine. So this is like, you can see the influence of Jabba's castle and all this thing, all of these uh, ideas for Star Wars that came later. I mean, look at that. That's sort of like a, wow. You know, wouldn't you like to see that in a Star Wars film? 
So this is where his mind this is such an inventive illustrator. Well, it takes us back to a time like Starlog magazine when mm. you, you saw all these things before the films came out. Yeah. And they were pretty, like, you know. Yeah. So there's a plant, aliens, uh, right? So that's like... Um, Sitting at a bar. What's that guy, Barlow, who used to do the uh, zoology, zoology oh, of... Phil? Oh, no. Of um, uh, alien worlds. <laughs> there's another... So he's obviously yeah. responsible for all these characters that we, that we saw in the, the background. -like. And there's this guy, remember him? Yeah, that's more like Admiral Akbar. Yeah. An aquatic air breather. Yeah. Okay, so that's really good. There's lots and lots of stories in here. In his workshop was mostly stories and, a and anecdotes about his uh, career, his long career, which was great because he had such a, such a varied career. He worked for many, many different people different types of jobs. So these are alien concepts, early alien concepts. You can see they're, they're quite different to the to the film, but formative because when you're looking, when you're doing designing a film, you you have to really look at this. This is getting more like the alien feel. You need to sort of spitball some ideas around and find the right. Well, that's why the art is so important because yeah. you know. Um, well, he was the very artist, you don't have Alien. You, yeah. don't, you don't have it. You don't have Star Wars either. Those, they yeah. set the pace. Yeah, yeah, people don't read scripts. They look at visual scripts. And the first ideas are these visual production paintings that they do, the pre-visuals. Yeah. Pre so well, a lot of work... A painting like that would that. inspire other people working yeah. on the film. Yeah, you and know, it, so. it also inspires other films. Yeah. So here's some of the... Uh, Looks like we're getting back into some Star Wars-y type space tech. Mm. It's lovely. Ah, here we go. Looks, looks very Nostromo-ish now. Um, doesn't have the same sort of, uh, you know, uh, um, claustrophobic feel that the film has. Mm. But he's exploring different ways, and until he did this, no one really had good illustrations of um, bridges of ships, spaceships, and things before. Well, 2001 Space Odyssey. Well, they came didn't have a bridge, early. did they? It was more like a desk. Yeah. The guy can draw. So you know, this is sort of before uh, he came along. The bridges of spaceships looked like Star Trek. That's so right. It was very yeah. clean and yeah. had carpet and, yeah. and doors and went, shoo, shoo, and that's it. <laughs> so just one big television do, monitor. Do that and again. Do that again. Shoo, shoo. Oh, yeah. So um, you know the idea of exploring different shapes. Mm -hmm. So base it on simple shapes. This looks more like the hammer of Thor. That's now become a um, battle cruiser or or a um, a uh, mining ship or something mm. yeah and of course he doesn't add the Look dirt because how much do you remember the thing about alien something. was that everything was dirty yeah like it is backstage you know like on a mining vehicle or something like that yeah so this is great fun some more alien <coughs> designs and uh getting into um, designing of the drop ships uh, of the Nostromo because there's a mother ship obviously and then, then these little drop ships are working out different designs different ideas for that for the legs and how it would land depending on the script of course you know ah you're getting some more of the sets uh, comparing comparing some of the sets here oh look at the drawing here how much yeah there's a lot of work in there it's beautiful yeah look at that. It's slightly out of focus, that picture, but... Yeah. But here we go, a perfect um, um, perspective and lovely attention to details and, and create, creating a sense of drama. Um, he, loved to, he, he loved every aspect of drawing, so he'd come up, he'd yeah. never shy away from logos. You know, this is another thing. That he did. He's strong he's on all points. He's anything. strong on all points. Yeah. Yeah. He's not scared to, to dabble in, in in anything. And he really if researches. You, if you're going to make well. it look real, yeah. the logos have to look real too. Yeah. Know? Well, there's the. I like that the, drawing very much. The cat. I can't remember the name yeah. of the cat. 
Um, so, yeah, oh, there he is on set. There he is, look at that. There he is on set. That's great. Some of his storyboards, of course, which were very, um, very, very cool. See how the early days of uh, storyboarding, they Rob, use these television, television shows. So, yeah, I was just thinking that. It's yeah. quite fun, isn't it? Yeah. But they, well, they paste them up. Do you think they were printed off and he just used them? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. There's yeah. like, doing uh, maps. here we go. He's doing maps. Mm. So, you know, he's, he, 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 he basically tackle anything. He's a perfect gun for hire. This is why, why I loved him so much. Because, you know, he's not scared to do anything at all. He asked him to, yeah, do this product poster or something. He said, yeah, yeah, I'll do it. Do this album cover. Yeah, I'll do it. Oh, so this is um, Conan. This is Conan, yeah. yeah. So look at that. Uh... Yeah, beautiful. So he's a very accomplished, um, very accomplished painter. Great thinker. Great problem solver with a pencil. You know, this is his. He, this is his forte. When you say problem solver, yeah. like, I mean, he's actually setting the scene for all the people to follow him. Yeah. Um, the, you know, designers and the colorists and all that sort of stuff. But um, problem solver. Yeah. You problem solve with a pencil. It's a lot easier than mucking around with oh, it's photos, cheap. photo bashing. That's nice too. Yeah. Look, he ain't scared, baby. He's not scared of doing logos. This is him. Right, he'll do the, the classic chrome logos from the 70s, you know, in a beautiful, beautiful um, brush technique. Do I feel a classic chrome of the 70s uh, uh, mm. book coming on? Mm. So, um, <clears throat> look at the colors there. It looks like the brothers Hildebrandt with the, the yeah. reds and the blues, yeah. the deep blues and the reds. So it's, you know, um, the action, he's got action there. Look how chunky he's made Conan. Mm. So he's put a little bit of cartoon license in there. This is a famous want. picture. Yeah. Before the film came out, um, th this is what was in the magazines. Yeah, so that gave him... But he was different, didn't he? A look. He? Yeah. Conan a look. So it's different to the Frazetta look. Because just one... Well, yeah, but then you've got the or actual... The look. Then you've got the actual physique of, um, of, yeah. of Schwarzenegger. Which then you have to change everything around. Yeah. <clears throat> so some of the... Uh, this looks very shinara ish these landscapes and castles. So he's really, really, really adept. Shinarish. Sort yeah. of Shinara. So he's really okay. adept, he's really adept at uh, creating these worlds humbly in a pencil. But look at the detail in there that he's put. So these when they're blown up and put on a production on a wall in the production room, yeah. you know, for the for the producer or the and the edit the um, Directed to pitch the film to the oh the, yeah the, the staff they, the and, stakeholders and they also inspired the director yeah to really get into it you know look at this 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 is this is an pretty iconic powerful. painting mm. of the uh, series just just in, that would have just sold in the, the highlights that would have sold yeah, the show just in the highlights alone yeah you know, and you've got all they this, would have see looked all this. at this and said yep this is what we're making yep. this is what we're making yeah so it's beautiful. And you go into little details, look at the details on the sword hilt. Look at the work that he's put into that, mm. right? So he's not scared of logos, he's not scared of symbols. This is what I mean by being brave and, and solving problems with a pencil. Anything that he puts his pencil to, he'll solve that problem. He will create something really unique and, and beautiful. Yeah, try that. yeah this is um, a millstone. Thing. So, where slaves push this thing to make um, wheat or whatever, whatever it is they do. Had to pre Mad Max. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> so, you can have a look at his paintings of monsters and demons and, you know, night skies, the Tower of Serpents. This is another production That's painting. beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. So he investigates, you know, Celtic mythology and drawings and stuff. That's the symbol of um, the, the publisher, Wild and Woolly. Okay, cool. Yeah. I don't know what that is. Anyway, that's um, Ron Cobb's book.
Color Vision. So if you can find it on eBay, if it's still in pub being published, or you can get it on, um, uh, sorry, uh, if, you pub if you can find it on Amazon, if not, find it on eBay. Mm. But this is really, uh, this. you should have this in your collection, yeah. definitely. Yeah. He is, if not the, you he, know, he's pretty important because you, you, you can see what followed from his drawings. Well, he's a hero. He's my hero. The reason why he's my hero is um, because he's one of the bravest artists I've ever met. He can tack. He will tackle any job that that uh, you ask him to do. So you know, it doesn't matter whether it's a cartoon or whether it's a production painting for a multi multi billion dollar movie. Um, he'll do it and he'll do it so well so he solves problems with a pencil so thumbs up for me and he was one of the most um, powerful political cartoonists I've ever come across in Australia yeah well I never even knew that you see yeah. I never I wasn't really into into political cartoons um, but obviously the, the you know the era he's talking about I mean, is the 70s that particular 60s cartoon and 70s. Is just, yeah. it says it all yeah so there we go okay well it's, it's all from me and it's all from him. <laughs> this is Jim Bridges and Franz Cantor saying see you next time and check us out on Patreon. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye. Thanks for the sour persimmons, cousin.